Cheers tonight started with an idea on a road trip and not only turned that idea into a successful apparel company, but used that idea to create a new community for designers, uh, really based on the things that, that we love. It's what we do, design, and it's where we live. It's our home. And they did that through United Pixel Workers. That wasn't enough for them, and so now they're giving it back through the Cotton Bureau and offering designers a chance to create their own pieces and share that with the rest of the design community and folks outside the design community. It's really cool to see what they're doing. I've had the pleasure of spending the last couple of days hearing a little bit of their story, and I am very excited for you guys to be able to hear what they have to share with you as well. Please welcome Jay and Nathan from United Pixel Workers and the Cotton Bureau. What's up, Denver? So much brighter than it was before you yeah, got here. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm Jay. Nathan. It's Nate. Uh, we make t-shirts for a living. Um, among. We don't make the t-shirts. All right. We don't. We don't make t-shirts for a living. We make websites where we sell t-shirts for a living, and somebody else makes the t-shirts for a living. Um, you are likely here uh, because we are founders and stewards of a thing called United Pixel Workers. Um, that, I guess, is like a fake union that, <laughs> or something uh, that sort of took off. We'll get into all that story later. Um, but it's mostly a way for us to sell t-shirts. Um, now you may know us uh, for, a, for a business called Cotton Bureau, which again, we will get into the specifics of later, uh, where we make t-shirts for other people. Uh, first, we were a web design studio. Uh, that's what we started our company as, uh, called Full Stop, which uh, probably less of you know about, um, but is probably a more interesting part of our story, um, which we're going to talk about first. Uh, we are from a city called Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, a little applause. Are you from Pittsburgh? Are you from Pittsburgh? I'm from Watertown, All right, all right, Western PA. It's close enough. Uh, Pittsburgh is known for a few things. Uh, it's probably more beautiful than you thought it was. <laughs> Um, I know that you guys have like mountains and shit over here, but uh, you know we have a, a, a rustic landscape of our own with a couple of rivers. Uh, it's known for steel, which isn't really made there anymore. Um, got a pretty good football team, pretty good hockey team, and lately a pretty good baseball team. Uh, we are also known for a pretty good college basketball team uh, that beat <laughs> the University of Colorado uh, 77 to 48 earlier today. Uh, so if any of you are Buffaloes in the uh, in the audience. Uh, I'm not going to apologize. Um, lose the room early. That's my move uh, when we give presentations. <laughs> Get everybody against you. Uh, we're gonna spend a, a few minutes uh, giving you a few disclaimers, uh, both about this talk uh, and about ourselves. Uh, I'm gonna give you the disclaimers about the talk first. Nate's gonna take over from there. Um, we don't do this. This is not something we do. We don't really go around and tell our story. Uh, we're, we mostly tell our story to each other. Um, one thing we'd like to do is talk, uh, so it's, it's good that you're, you're having us here for a talk. But uh, we are not really prepared at all uh, for this. <laughs> um, this is not something we've rehearsed all that much. Uh, this isn't a talk we've ever given before. Uh, we like to not really do things uh, more than one time. Uh, so this is, this is a bespoke presentation <laughs> for you guys. Um, we're going to meander a lot. Uh, our business is very complicated. Our businesses are very complicated. Um, so uh, we're going to do our best to try to put it in some sort of like understandable order. Uh, we may even break for questions in the middle because you may have questions along the way uh, that we don't necessarily uh, want to wait all the way to the end for. Um, don't just like raise your hand in the middle or anything and like you know interrupt us. But you know maybe we'll say like, hey, anybody have any questions? And then you can raise your hand. I think there's even a mic that might go around for questions. Um, do, we, do I need to say any more about that? You good? You want to talk now? Yeah, my turn. All right. Um, well, yeah, that's, I mean, we, he says we aren't prepared, but I promise you we tried about a hundred different directions. As we I usually mean, we, do. We might not be prepared for this talk, but we overthought a lot of other talks. Yeah, we're prepared for many, <laughs> many other talks we could have given. Um, and as much as we, as much as we talk about um, our story and things like that, we, we argue every bit as much about the decisions for the company and where we want to go for lunch and you know pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. I know you guys are mostly designers. I'm a developer, FYI. So you know, um, you 
probably are familiar with uh, the, the preeminent pipe foundry, you know, in the country is Huffler and Frere Jones. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, their story, or there's two sides of, of the story. And I think the story of Full Stop is, how do we not do that? You know, how do two guys who are as different as two guys can be come together and form one company, uh, and that company itself ultimately spawn other companies? Um, and how do we make sure that our differences don't divide, you know, our companies and our employees and, and things like that? So, by way of introduction, uh, I am a Christian. Jay is a agnostic. I think I've gotten him to admit he's an agnostic. Sure. Um, agnostic, you know. There's, yeah. yeah. I am, you know, registered Republican. Jay is registered Democrat. Mm -hmm. um, I am a developer. He's a designer. Uh, he's a little bit older than me. I'm a little, little, bit. A little bit younger. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's had a lot of experiences. I haven't had as many experiences. Um, I got a family. I got three kids. He has no kids. You know, no I'm dogs. Not no gonna husband. have any kids. Yeah. yeah not, not having kids. Married, ladies. Yeah. So back off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, we are. I mean, we are truly an odd couple, and we inhabit you know a space together, and you know our partnership has has been pretty fruitful. You know, we like to think. So I'm gonna go back to the beginning and talk a little bit about where I came from. I have a slide for that. Oh, no. no. Okay, that's it. That's it. This is like, yeah, <laughs> just, you know. Yeah. No baby pictures. No, no, no. Like, uh, no. Okay. Uh, so my beginning, I, you know, I, I went to school. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And uh, like a lot of people here, you know, I made websites. I designed things for people. Um, and that sort of became the career that I pursued after. I, went, I got a dual major, economics and political science. And I realized after, I was about halfway through my senior year looking for jobs. I had a fiance who was going to graduate a year later, we would have had to move and try to figure out uh, where she was going to work or where she was going to finish school. Um, and I looked at pretty much every available job in the Pittsburgh area, in the Harrisburg area, in the D.C. area, and it became very clear that I'd have to either work for the government, which I did not want to do, or I'd have to work against the government. And that was not exactly a palatable option either. Uh, so I ended up making websites, and I took a job, or I, excuse me, I, I offered my services for mm -hmm. free to a, uh, a local web company, a web and video shop in Pittsburgh. Um, thankfully, they said yes. I came in with a couple goals. I wanted to get a job, got that. I wanted to get a blog started at this place, and they didn't. Didn't happen. We didn't see eye to eye <laughs> on that offer. And I, we really wanted to make them the best web shop in Pittsburgh, you know, the, like sort of the happy cog of Pittsburgh. And uh, we'll get to why that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I was there. I was there for about six months when I saw this guy walk in. The guy who interviewed me, who happened to be his best friend, was escorting him across uh, our beautiful office space. And I saw him talk to my project manager. And, like, you know, a couple days later, he was my boss. So, <laughs> so uh, You were like I'll, 22, man. I mean, everybody was your boss. Yeah, but I, you know. <laughs> Uh, so I have a little bit of a different story than Nate, uh, as, I'm, as he mentioned, uh, I'm a little bit older. Um, my career uh, in, the, in the internet was, was, I had sort of a similar story at the beginning where um, I didn't know what I wanted to do in college, uh, like most, you know, most people here. Um, I was kind of a design kid on the side a little bit, but I was into art, I was into, into writing and social sciences and things like that. Um, we do have one thing in common, I was a political science and journalism double major. Um, so again, not design or any of this stuff at all. Um, I got out of college and I had no idea what I wanted to do, but I knew I had this hobby in the internet. Um, so I tried to get hired uh, at, a, at a web design shop uh, somewhere in Pittsburgh. A uh, place picked me up, uh, a place called Ripple Effects Interactive. This was maybe late 2001, early 2002. Um, and they didn't make me a designer, uh, they made me an associate account executive, uh, which is a client person. Uh, an account manager, I mean, depending on, you know, what the, what your personal nomenclature is. Uh, I talked to clients for a living. Um, I did reports. Uh, I was in Excel a lot. I had to, like, put on a tie and, like, go to meetings and get on planes and fly to other places and things like that. Um, but I was, like, a kid, and I had no idea what I was doing. And I didn't even know that this is something that I wanted to do. Um, but, you know, they threw a few other things at me. I was a little bit of a, like, a media buyer back in the day. I was, you know, doing, like, banners and emails and uh, their early days of search engine marketing and, uh, and search engine optimization. Um, so I was pretty much as far from design as you could be uh, in this particular company. Uh, I bounced around through a few companies, 
doing doing basically the same thing. Uh, I tried a few escape attempts to get out of the internet altogether because I realized that that probably wasn't really what I wanted to do for a living was talk to clients. Uh, I thought about culinary school, being a being a cook or a chef. Um, I didn't actually do that. Um, I left to go to actually go back to school for a master's degree in interior architecture and design uh, to try to get out of the internet one more time. And then the gravity pulled me back in. Uh, and that's when I ended up back in Pittsburgh um, at this company where there was this brash 22 year old. Um, so that's where we, that's where we ended up working together. I think it's your turn. We talking about your turn, you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, we can talk about the, the you know the company that we let's talk about the company. At, um, Jay having you know failed for ten years finally <laughs> comes, to, <laughs> comes home to Pittsburgh, wasting my twenties. Yeah, me like full of energy. Uh huh. Uh, you know, we worked there for a while. Uh, got better every day for me. I mean, I learned a ton in the first you know six weeks there. Is there's a lot of people who don't have an education in a topic. You know, it's it's just cramming. You know, every night all day there. Um, inherited some responsibility became more than just a developer, someone who was consulted on a strategy and a user experience, um, even picked up a little project management when another guy who was there left. Um, you know, Jay, at the same time, we became like really tight. Like despite all our differences, we also cared about sports and we mm -hmm. like, were really concerned about the quality of the websites that we were putting out as a company. We were also concerned about a lot of Nerf basketball at the right, time. There was a lot of Nerf basketball. A lot of our deep talks happened over some Nerf basketball. Um, the company that we were at, uh, was sort of an interactive company, but it was mostly a video company. They had acquired an interactive company, what, 10 years before we Yeah, something there. like that, yeah. Uh, but the founder had eventually left. Anyone who had been there at that time was long gone. Um, so who were left were video people who sort of managed a very small interactive department. Basically shopped out any development work to another local partner firm that they had in the city. Um, did a lot of Flash websites, if mm -hmm. you remember Flash. Remember Flash, oh, no, guys? Yeah. Flash. I mean, I told them it was a bad idea when I got there, but again, 22, so, yeah. So they did a lot of Flash websites. They had a lot of videos. Um, the salespeople kind of threw us whatever, as you like to say, tires they dredged up when they were trawling the bottom of the ocean. Mm -hmm. um, the management was a little bit dysfunctional. Uh, the, the two co-founders were never around. They had other jobs. The people under them were sort of clueless about what we did at, one time they asked me what I did, and I said, well, I kind of like translate between what the designer does and you know, like what the user sees. Like I'm kind of like a, in communications back then. <laughs> and uh, that was good enough for them. So at least I had allies you know, within the department. Yeah. And Jay was you know, the strongest of those allies. And we talked a lot about, again, how to make websites better, and honestly, how to make the company better. You know, we pushed them to switch over to Gmail from Exchange, and we, you know, I tried to push them into Skype, and we tried to push them in a lot of modern directions. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of really, interesting websites when we were there. But at some point, it kind of became obvious that we hit a ceiling. You know, we had some enemies above us who seemed like they might be friends for a while, but eventually sort of decided that our um, our methods maybe were on Unsound? Yeah, they, they didn't <laughs> quite like the, the, the energy coming from us. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, at some point we decided that it wasn't gonna work. And for me, that was the last option. Um, Sitting here is kind of weird for me. Um, in school, I, I would have definitely thought I'm gonna go work for somebody. I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna work for somebody, and I will just do what they tell me to do. I mean, I'll be good at it, but I'll do what they tell me to do because entrepreneurship, ambition, mm -hmm. like business, those were all like words that shouldn't be said because they were just, you know, they didn't have the purity of like technical work or production. Yeah, whereas in my case, I mean, I'd worked at so many other places in Pittsburgh and pissed off somebody at every single company that I was basically out of options at this point. And I, think, I think Jay recognized in me, a, a fellow traveler, in the making other people angry business. Uh -huh. So, yeah. you know, he kind of, he saw what was coming down the road and said, look. Yeah, the other, the other colleague that I had uh, that was a fellow traveler in the making people angry business that was a coworker is now my wife, so. <laughs> So we, uh, option A, work here, make this company better. Kind of didn't look like it was gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Option B, find another place in Pittsburgh. My family, both my wife's family and I are in Pittsburgh. We're gonna stay there. You know, we weren't, we weren't looking around at other places, so I had to find somewhere. Interviewed a couple places, looked at every website for every interactive shop in Pittsburgh. And there weren't many. It was, it was all the same. You know, every company there was the same company. And we had heroes that were out there in the internet who were saying things that resonated with us 
that we believed in. You know, the Michael Ontarios and the Andy Rutledges at the time. Mm-hmm. And the Before you went know, nuts. happy guys and the 37 Signals and the Kudal partners. And we really had an idea of like what the business should be. Mm-hmm. And we tried to talk this business into being that business. And they weren't buying you know, what we were trying to sell them. Yeah. We had a few uh, seminal events at the end of this company. Uh, we had a presentation um, called Interactivisms where we tried to give kind of a, a manifesto of like the jobs that we should be accepting, the jobs we shouldn't be accepting. Uh, and we showed it to one of the partners and she was like, yeah, there's no way you're going to give this presentation to the rest of the company. Uh, so that was kind of step one. There was another thing that happened where, you know, the, again, one of these sort of former allies at this company um, kind of pushed the wrong button with us. And we, we had a conversation. I remember out on the street. It was almost, I think it was exactly like five years ago. It was in March of, of, 20, of uh, 2009. And we said, it may be tomorrow, it may be in six months, we don't know when, but like we're out of here. Uh, we need to start planning to, to get out of here. Um, we, we had a scheme. Uh, we had this Machiavellian, like many part, like bank heist, like kind of Ocean's Eleven thing uh, to get out of this company, and every single step went off without a hitch. Um, basically, we had th- the biggest client that this company had was a, a state university up in Massachusetts. Um, that I was the, the point person on the project. I was the project manager. Uh, I was doing some design. Uh, I was g- going to be doing the design for it. Uh, I went up with a, a very junior salesperson in order to, to pitch the job and ultimately win the job. Um, so to this client, like I was the project. Um, that was maybe April of 2009. Um, and when we decided, like, all right, we got to go, I kind of felt, A, I felt bad that we'd be leaving this client behind because I had a great relationship with them. Um, but also, we kind of thought, like, what if we take them? Because uh, it was a lot of money. Uh, and we had, this is probably a good, a good point to say, um, whenever you start your own business, especially if you're doing like freelance or you know, something, and you're like, maybe I can go full time with this. You know, they always tell you, like, save up a bunch of money, make sure you have like six months worth of money, and, and, and you know, make sure you have like more work than you could possibly handle on the side, that you, know, you need to do it full time now, all that stuff. We had none of that. Like, we didn't, we didn't have any of that. We didn't have any jobs. We didn't have any money. What we had is like, we went out and bought like brand new MacBooks, and we're like, was there a depression Let's in start 2009? A I'm just trying to remember. Yeah, maybe like a recession, 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 something like that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we thought if we can, like, pry this one client away from our company, like, this will be our meal ticket for, like, the first 10 months of the business. Um, so we started a scheme to get, <laughs> to basically <laughs> injure the company uh, personnel-wise so that if we left, there would be no one left to do the job. Uh, the, the interactive company was, the interactive part of the company was about six people, seven people, something like that. We were two. Uh, I found another job for another one of our friends. So I, I called up a buddy. I was like, hey, I got a great designer for you. You want him? Um, so he was out. My best friend, who Nate mentioned earlier, was going to bounce after we left. Uh, the salesperson, the junior salesperson, uh, who was like, you know, the only other link to this company, um, was already looking for another job. So I kind of gave her a little bit of a nudge. Uh, and we just went there one day and sprung it on him and said, like, I'm out, Nate's out, Gage is out, Dana left last week, Devin's going to leave. Uh, so, and we kind of gave him, like, a day or so to, like, absorb that. And then we came back the next day and said, so, you got all this work. Uh, you're going to need somebody to do it. Um, you know, we made him an offer they couldn't refuse, and we took the job. Uh, and they were, they were our client from that point forward. Uh, and that was the job that we did for about the first 10 months that we were in business. I like to think this was a win-win-win. I, mm-hmm. I've been doing a lot of like negotiation research. You know, we kind of like we gave them their normal margin, and mm-hmm. we got our friends out of a bad situation, and we got a company. Mm-hmm. So like, let's I talk about everyone, that company. I think everyone Boom! Made it. Full stop. Full stop. Full stop. Full stop was our company. <laughs> uh, we uh, are pretty good at naming things, I think. Uh, and full stop was the only name we ever considered for this company, uh, mostly because we are both like pretty unyielding jerks about a lot of things. Um, and full stop was like a real statement that we put out into the world um, about like the kind of principles that we would have uh, in this company. Um, do we want to talk about principles at all? Yeah, I think I think our initial website said something like, introducing full stop, we make the best websites in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Which was, I don't know that it was true at the time, but it became true. It was, it was close to true. I yeah. mean, Pittsburgh, you know, the bar was not that high. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, well, while Jay was plotting um, and scheming, and trying to figure out a way to, you know, make us money. Uh, I was reading again, and I read an amazing book called *The Partnership Charter* by David Gage, and I, I memorized it and I studied it, and I sat down and I wrote a charter, and I left some blanks for Jay to fill in, 
but it was basically the principles of our company going forward. Uh, what happens if we make so much money we don't know what to do with it? What happens if we got a business that didn't in happen. three months? No, that didn't happen. <laughs> what if we got a business in three months? Uh, what kind of work are we going to do? What are we going to tell our clients when we do our work? You know, what kind of work are we not going to do? Um, I reread it again the other day. It's my favorite thing I've ever written. And all the principles that sort of have buttressed our work and our relationship to mm -hmm. this day were espoused in that document, you know, five years ago. Yeah. And that sort of ultimately became a blog post. There's probably a blog post out there somewhere. Um, it became the foundation of our next website that's listed right on the website. Here are our principles. Mm -hmm. Who you see is who you get. <laughs> like we're the ones doing else. the work. There's, you know. you know. We do side projects, and it makes us better. And those turned into other things that we'll talk about later. Um, good, fast, cheap. Pick one of those things. You know which one you better be picking if mm -hmm. you're going to work with us. You know, we don't do work for the change that you shook out of your couch cushion. Uh, what principles that I mean there there are another four or five on that list yeah um, um, I mean we we're talking you know we were talking to Chris yesterday about this um, you know uh, well, you know one of his questions was you know how do you select clients how do you make sure that you know the right client you know is the right client for you um, we were totally unapologetic about who we were and who you were getting into business with uh, when you worked with us um, you know what you read on the website is who we are in person um, you know and if we don't jive then we're not working together um, and we thought that, you know, th there were enough, we've seen enough of the, the wrong way to do it, uh, in, especially in client services, that we thought we had, you know, a, a pretty good picture of what the right way to do it was. Uh, and we went out and we, you know, we, we did it for four years. Um, and, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty proud of that. I mean, that presentation, the interactive business presentation, in a lot of ways became another plank in, the, you know, the platform that we developed. Mm -hmm. They weren't all applicable to a company of our size, but a lot of them were. And we, you know, it had been a, a, a process of a couple of years, maybe two years, mm -hmm. getting to know each other, getting to know the industry, getting to know, you know, the type of company that we wanted to create. Um, full Stop as a company existed in the beginning off of that one client that we took. I mean, honestly, it was 5000 bucks a month, mm -hmm. 10 months, not a lot of money. You know, we split it, we found some other income. We didn't know out of the gate if we were going to need to, I'd pick up some freelance development work and he'd pick up some freelance design work or exactly how we'd make it work at first, but we figured, you know, we had confidence in ourselves that we would get there eventually. We had a couple other, there were supposed to be a couple other jobs that we were going to negotiate, but two out of the three yeah. fell, you know, fell through the cracks. Um, picked up at a little coffee shop job in Pittsburgh, a lady who made really great coffee, had a reputation as a deadbeat, it turns out. <laughs> um, we always shook her down and got the money. Mm -hmm. It wasn't much. I think we did the best website ever for 3000 bucks, maybe. Yeah. It was nothing. Yeah. I mean, we did the best identity work that we've ever done because we got our buddy to do it. It was a font and a logo and every, I mean, it was the best stuff you could do. Yeah, it was like no money. Um, but in the <laughs> meantime, we spun up Pixel Whistles. It just, you know, mm -hmm. we had some spare time. Uh, we kept, you know, plugging away. That was the first year. We moved into the second year. We started to get noticed. You know, that blog that I wanted to start at the previous place? Well, <laughs> all those things I wanted to say, we started saying. Wrote a little post called The Withering Away of Flash. And nobody believed me. We sat down and sat on panels and talked about it. Mm -hmm. I said at the time, you got Google and Microsoft and Adobe, or I'm sorry, Apple, and nobody's supporting Flash out there on these new iPhone thingies that everyone seems to like. I wonder where that's going. Wrote another post about growing up as a designer. Are you going to, you know, grown up as an industry? Right. Are you a designer who designs and builds it yourself? Or are you a designer who works and collaborates with a developer like Jay? Jay works with me. I do the, you know, I build it. He designs it. You know, we wrote a lot of posts those days, picked a lot of fights, you know, 37 signals and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, other people. I mean, early on, we didn't have any work, uh, you know, so we needed to get our, our name out there somehow. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a journalism major. Uh, Nate was the editor of his high school and college newspaper, uh, the opinion section, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> um, you know, so, you know, this is what we, this is what we are. I mean, we're, you know, we, we love to talk, we love to write, we love to communicate. And in the absence of work, uh, you know, we knew we need to get our, you know, get our name out there somehow. Uh, and this was, you know, that was our move. I mean, this was, I mean, this, to be clear, was very much the honeymoon period. I mean, we were mm -hmm. living the dream. You know, <laughs> we, we hopped on a plane one year and flew down to Austin for South by, and we're in the Denver airport, and I was going down an escalator, and I leaned over to Jay, I was like, we have the best job in the entire world. Like, we're going to Austin just to hang out with people and, like, have fun and eat barbecue. 
and then we go home and maybe we do some work on our sitting in our chairs with our big screen and like wearing t-shirts this, t -shirts. Is, this oh. is the best time <laughs> we go down there we meet some amazing people we mm -hmm. have some amazing experiences and it really confirmed everything that we had driven for you know when we left we wanted to have a blog we wanted to be the best we wanted to we wanted to go do it and we were mm -hmm. doing it yeah um you know, we, we wanted to be, I mean, who we ended up as um, maybe wasn't the company that we, saw, that, we, that we saw ourselves being in the very beginning. I mean, we wanted to be like the, the best in Pittsburgh. We wanted to be the, you know, the one company that everybody names, uh, you know, when, they, when it's like, I need, you know, I got 15 grand, I have 30 grand, I need a website, let's call full stop. Um, we ended up working with, you know, a lot of people outside of Pittsburgh too. Um, you know, but we, we kind of made our bones, uh, you know, doing, doing the best work we, we knew how to do. Um, we worked with um, a couple of, of really big name restaurants in Pittsburgh. Um, we have an interesting restaurant story that you should ask me about after after the talk. Um, you know, restaurant stuff. Uh, you know, a couple of schools. Uh, we did work for startups in New York, startups in Pittsburgh. Um, you know, projects big and small. Uh, you know, that were that were pretty were pretty proud. Do you want to talk about any specific ones? Or I, mean, I mean, startups in San Francisco, startups in San Diego. I mean. It was really mm -hmm. exactly what we wanted to do. We had said from the beginning, you basically have two, two options when you go out there. You take anything that walks in the door, or you only take the things that walk in the door that you can put in your portfolio. And at the, at the old place, they had a saying, you know, one for, the, one for the meal, one for the real. You know, they're a video company, so whatever. But we kind of said, like, how about nine for the real, and like maybe one every once in a while for the meal. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that was in our interactivism's yeah. presentation. Uh, <laughs> And, and that's, the, that's the approach that we took out into, you know, full stop. And it was not easy. Like, we, we turned down good money sometimes. Mm -hmm. We turned down clients that had six of seven things that we wanted, and there was a red flag that meant we had to turn it down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and the meals were light sometimes, you know. Uh, but yeah. that's, that's what we wanted to do, and that, I mean, we kind of take the hard way anytime we can. <laughs> And we took it, and I mean, it made it, it made me really proud of the work we did. We got to work with Mozilla on a site that you've never seen because <laughs> they never released it. Um, if any of you know Aza Raskin, who's like a design hero of mine, he uh, he was at Mozilla at the time, and I got in touch with him, and he said, "Yeah, I got some work for you. Like, I got an idea." And so we did it. One of my favorite websites we've ever done mm -hmm. uh, that nobody ever saw. Uh, Aza moved on to Massive Health. And he asked us if we wanted to do a little maintenance work for them. I said, we don't do maintenance work. I'm sorry. And I said, oh, all right. Well, cool. So then we went down to South by the next year and met up with him. And we did all of Massa's website. It was mm -hmm. amazing. And uh, they never released it um, <laughs> <laughs> because they got acquired by Jawbone. Uh, but then eventually they did release like a modified version that is to this day the craziest, most insane website. It, it's still up at MassiveHealth.com, I think. Yeah, I think you need so. to check it out. And it'll blow your mind, and it's like two years old now. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, we're really proud to work with those guys. Mm -hmm. We did Alpha Lab in Pittsburgh. They just got named uh, number six uh, um, what Startup accelerator. Accelerator, yeah. accelerator in the country. I mean, and they're in our hometown. We, we put our hometown in the background of our website, at the bottom of our website. We had a little skating penguin slide out that we almost got in trouble for. With the penguins, uh, yeah. Yeah. And we're pretty proud of you from Pittsburgh, you know. It, uh, I don't know if you know this. Um, but we did, we did all the client work that we wanted to do. We didn't make all the dollars that we wanted to make, mm -hmm. uh, but we were really proud of that. And at some point, I think things started to sour a little bit. Just, it got a little, a little tiring. Mm -hmm. A little, you know, like, when are we going to, you know, make the real money? Or when are we going to, you know, when are we going to not do yet another project and have to talk to yet another client? Yeah, it's a grind. I mean, like, working with clients, if you work with clients for a living, you, if, you know, even if you're out by, you know, on your, on your own, you're calling all the shots, uh, you know, you're, you're doing things your way, it's tough. And, it's, and, and a lot of the problems keep on coming around, keep on coming around. Um, you know, for us, one of the big problems that, that we ran into was iteration is, is satisfying. Iteration is fun a lot of times. You know, it's great to come up with a great concept and, you know, bring a, a project through, uh, you know, all the way from concept to launch. Um, but you rarely get it right the first time, uh, and you put a site out there in the world, and you know usually in client services you launch it, you get paid, and you're done. Uh, you know, with us, we saw from our own projects, um, you know that that putting something out there in the world and like seeing what breaks, seeing what works, um, seeing the things that you thought were going to work that don't work, or the, the things that you really, you know you didn't even think about that ended up being like the hero of the site. Um, 
and then making those changes accordingly. Um, that stuff ended up being like really satisfying for us, especially because we were the one calling shots on those projects. Um, you know, but very few clients, I think we only had maybe two or three clients over the course of our entire four years as full stop. Um, you know, they came back for, you know, okay, hey, let, let's, you know, let's do this again. Or like, you know, let's, let's, you know, now that we know some things, let's, let's change it a little bit. But, you know, most, most clients don't have the money for that. Um, you know, they got a one shot, one budget, um, and you do your best, and you put it out in the world, and you cross your fingers. Um, that was kind of the biggest, you know, one of the biggest bummers for us doing client work. I mean, we had, we had two clients who had our, sort of a retainer relationship with. Um, neither of them ended up working out. Some things went wrong. But at one point, Koi Vin wrote a little post on his subtraction.com website and said, I'm out, you know, I'm done with, done with client work, the end of client services, I think he called it. Um, and we took issue with that. You know, we took a little umbrage that someone would question our line of business. Uh, so did Erica Hall at, at Mule Design and maybe some other people. And we wrote a post, and, you know, I had some good dialogue with Koi about it. And we said, no, client services is not dead. That's silly. Like, people need stuff all the time. And they can't always afford to have people in house to do it. And sometimes they don't have the expertise that they need to do it. And they, they need to look for somebody else. And we can be that somebody else. Like we can make it really good. Um, and we had two relationships like that. One, we got a big chunk of money up front to design an amazing website. Uh, and we also worked on their iPhone app, which was really cool too for us. Mm -hmm. We hadn't done any iPhone development or design before, uh, but we got to do that. And at, at one point they said, we feel like we're paying you too much money. And we kind of don't want to do this like monthly retainer thing anymore. And we thought they were crazy because obviously design is the most important thing. And they should be willing to pay whatever it takes yeah. to have the best design. I mean, it was more than that. I mean, we were, we were business consultants for them. I mean, we were, we were in. I mean, I was basically the creative director of the company um, at a certain point. We, we consulted on their product design, and they were, they were making a physical product. Um, you know, so we were working with their industrial designers to you know, talk about you know, form factor of the product, um, you know, kind of tell them where their, where their business should go. The first time we met with them, um, they were like, you know, they told us about what they were doing, and we said, you know, hey, you know, you guys thought about Kickstarter? I mean, this was three years ago, something like that. Um, you know, we were, we were like, you know, you guys should put this on Kickstarter. And they're like, oh, that's, that's kind of a good idea. They ended up being the biggest, at the time, uh, the biggest iPhone-related Kickstarter product project ever. 110? Yeah, at the time, it was, you know, I mean, that, those numbers don't really mean anything anymore on Kickstarter, uh, which has gotten a little nuts. But, um, you know, at the time, it was a big deal. I mean, so it was, we, were, we were part of their company. Uh, it wasn't just like, you know, we were making... PSDs and handing them off. And they had originally come to us as a result of a throwaway article that I had written on our blog about, you know, I had an iPhone, but I also wanted to have like a business number, so I thought Google Voice might be a good solution. I wrote mm -hmm. this blog post, I think I maybe tweeted it during Fireball. I was like, hey, John, like, I think you might like this. And he posted on a blog, you know, his blog during Fireball, and our blog blew up and stuff. Mm -hmm. And this client came to us as a result of seeing that. He said, you guys are in Pittsburgh, you clearly know what you're talking about is when it comes to you know, app design and things like that. Like, do you want to get together? Mm -hmm. And we did. And yet, those relationships deteriorated. It was sort of one more nail in the coffin of like, I mean, I'm not saying Koi's right, but maybe for us, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's maybe it's right for us. Let's put a pin in full stop. We'll come back to this because uh, the story's well, two, not over. Two, two, you got two more points? Two, all right. Points. I didn't mean to interrupt, uh, Dan. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Let's move on. Go all right. Where, where, all right. Uh, let's talk about this. Um. Uh, this is United Pixel Workers. Uh, is there anybody here who doesn't know what United Pixel Workers is? Show of hands. It's not. You can. You can raise your hand. You can raise your hand. I'm like, okay, a handful of hands. It's fine. Um, so United Pixel Workers, as I uh, very eloquently said at the beginning, um, is a. It's like a fake union for web designers and developers um, that masquerades as a online T-shirt store. This is yet another one of our arguments. Right. I what think is anybody you? who uses a computer to create can be a, a pixel, pixel worker. Yeah. These video games, you know, movies, like whatever. I mean, JJ Abrams says all the time. You know? Yeah, we're <laughs> a couple years in on Pixel Workers. Uh, we got an email from somebody uh, who works at Bad Robot, which is uh, JJ Abrams' production company, um, and told us, uh, "Hey, JJ Abrams loves what you guys do. Which what you guys do? Um, you guys just made this Detroit shirt with RoboCop on it. Um, JJ wants to get one and give it to Peter Weller." Um, who, if you don't know anything about RoboCop, was RoboCop. Um, and, uh, but we didn't have any like, men's larges on the site. And he was like, do you have any men's larges? And we like, dug through the pile like frantically, and we came up with two of them. Uh, so we sent 
Well, we're both men's larges, so like we saved like one or two men's yeah. larges in that game. Yeah. Sure, because it doesn't make. Um, <laughs> so we ended up apparently we didn't we never got any proof. Maybe it didn't happen. Uh, there's no photos or anything, but we'd like to think that somewhere RoboCop has one of our T-shirts. Uh, let's go back to the beginning on Pixel Workers. So, the, it is it is March 2010, I think, if my memory serves, uh, and I am driving across Pennsylvania with my wife Michelle. Um, she wasn't my wife then; she was my girlfriend then, my fiance, isn't it? You know, I'm trying to be you know for posterity. Um, we're driving across Pennsylvania, and I had the, I had this idea kind of kicking around in my head um, for for a few days, and I was like, what if there was like kind of like a T-shirt brand that was like just for web designers and developers um you know they kind of had this like union motif where there were like different locals and like we could make like different shirts for different cities um things like that she's like that sounds like a great idea like make it happen uh and luckily for us we didn't have anything else going on at the at the time we had this one university gig uh we just launched our blog we didn't really have anything else going on uh at the time um, plus i'll agree to anything <laughs> I'm like yeah, yeah. all right <laughs> Cool. What's like a website? <laughs> so I get back to Pittsburgh, and uh, you know I pitch it to the guys. Um, and by the way, this is this is I, we, I guess we left out who the company is in the in the very beginning. Uh, there are two more people that are part of uh, part of our company. Um, there's Matt, who's our back end developer, like database guy. He joined about ten months into the company. He's one of uh, Nate's boys from college. Uh, and there's Sarah, who handles all fulfillment and all customer service for everything we do. Uh, so the company's four people. Um, so Pixel Worker. Um, we didn't have anything going on, um, and we thought this would be a great opportunity to put something out there into the world um, that, A, um, was just another website in our portfolio because we didn't have any. Um, B, it was kind of like a way to give back to the community a little bit. It was a way that you could represent the entire community at once, but also represent you know, Denver or Atlanta or Chicago or London or, or whatever, um, you know, because people love to kind of show where they're from. I mean, I'm from Pittsburgh. I love to show that I'm from Pittsburgh. Um, you know, so it was kind of a way to like go micro and macro at the same time. Um, it was also a way to give back to a couple of our you know design heroes. Um, so if you know we did a Philadelphia shirt, um, we would send shirts to Jason Santa Maria or Dan Benjamin or Mike Montero, people that we knew were from were from Philly. Um, you know, we did that a few times. When we made our San Francisco shirt, Nate sent a San Francisco shirt to Aza Raskin, who we mentioned before about uh, with with Massive Health and Mozilla. Um, we made a Seattle shirt and you know sent one to Mike Davidson, who's, who's now one of our you know one of our closest friends. Uh, he's the vice president now, the vice president of design at Twitter, um, and the the commissioner of our fantasy football league. <laughs> <He's the reigning laughs> Super Bowl yeah, and a fan of the reigning Super Bowl champion, Seattle Seahawks. Ooh. Um, <laughs> right, right. It's a bad game. Um, so we made this website. Um, I guess I should say at first, um, this is the first thing I ever designed for Pixel Workers. Uh, the idea at first was not going to be like a global, even a national thing. It was meant to be uh, focused on just the area of the country that we come from that is referred to as the Rust Belt, which is an awesome name for the part of the country that we're from. Uh, cities like Milwaukee, Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Cleveland, uh, Cincinnati, uh, Detroit. Um, you know, these like post-industrial, um, you know, these post-industrial places that are kind of down on their luck a little bit, that are trying to come back from, you know, from the fact that all the industry is gone. Um, and, and frankly, cities that don't really get a whole lot of attention in, in design and, and, and the web, um, you know, so we thought, like, we're going to do shirts for, like, these people, and we're going to, you know, we're going to make that happen. And then we kind of thought, like, right away, um, we're not going to sell any shirts if we, just do, uh, if we just do stuff for, like, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, so we made the first website. Anybody remember this? Anybody, was anybody around back then? Anybody? We got one hand. We got, I mean, My people man. talked about this. Like, Dan Cedarholm might have tweeted about it. Yeah. Was there was a little bit of, a, you know, yeah. there, was a, there was a little bit of burn. That thing was really cool. <laughs> yeah, we had this, like, cool, like, sliding, like, side navigation stuff. Uh, we also had these, like, remember, everybody remember, like, ribbons on the internet? We had, like, the ribbons wrap around? Yeah, so we were not immune to design trends uh, at the time. Uh, so this is the first website we made. We had, like, these, like, cartoon pictures of T-shirts. We didn't have, like, real mock-ups or photos or anything. <laughs> Uh, and we launched with uh, a Pittsburgh shirt, a Philly shirt, and just like a standard, like straight up United Pixel Worker shirt. Um, and we didn't sell anything. Um, <laughs> in the beginning, I mean, and we were really excited every time we sold something. Put it that yeah, way. yeah. I mean, it was like an event. Something. Anytime, like anybody bought a shirt, um, we were probably moving like twenty shirts a month. Or whatever. This this is what fulfillment looked like. Um, I think that's actually just what stock looks like. <laughs> yeah, maybe that was like maybe that was what stock. This is like my this is like my like living room floor. 
Um, and there are like maybe two or three shirts in each of those piles. Uh, so this is like, you know, whatever, 30 shirts. Um, and this is a couple months in. I mean, we started with like, you know, the Pittsburgh shirt and the Philly shirt up at the top and the standard shirt up there. But by now, you know, we had like New York and San, uh, San Francisco and DC and Boston. Um, so we weren't really doing anything. Um, we got a little bit of attention. We got some love on Twitter. I mean, we put a lot more time into it than we're getting money out of it. Yeah, but we had more time than we had anything else at the, at the time. Um, we ended up making maybe nine shirts, nine individual shirts by the end of 2010. Um, and at the end of the year, we had like a real like heart to heart about like whether we still wanted to be doing this because it was, you know, at, at best we were breaking even. Um, you know, we'd make a few shirts, we'd sell a few shirts. If we were in the red at all, we weren't really far in the red, but we certainly weren't in the black. Um, and we wrote, I remember at the time, uh, a blog post on our full stop blog called So You Want to Make T-Shirts. Because um, I think a lot of people have this romantic idea in design. It's like, I'm going to make, it's like, you know, every designer has this dream, like, I'm going to have a T-shirt brand. I'm going to make my own T-shirts. And it's like, well, you don't know anything about making T-shirts. Like, the reality of, like, making and selling and printing and shipping and fulfillment and customer service and all that stuff is, like, a huge pain in the ass. These guys, the wildfire people, uh, learned that the hard way. Uh, at least we got to, like, ramp up slowly where we were selling, like, you know, 20 and then, like, 100 and whatever. They went from, like, zero to 20,000, like, overnight. Um, and they'd never sold a T-shirt in their lives before that day. Um, so they learned all this stuff. Like, they got thrown into the fire. Um, yeah, well... That's the best one. <laughs> um, so we wrote this post about like, you know, you know here's the reality of making a t-shirt brand. Um, and it's not glamorous and you're not gonna make any money. And like, you know, just to make like $1,000 takes selling 100 t-shirts. And selling 100 t-shirts is really hard. Um, you know, so we wrote this post uh, and then we decided uh, to keep it. And we decided to change things. Um, you wanna handle this part? Oh, okay. Your turn. Have you ever heard of John Gruber, the guy I just mentioned a little bit ago, Daring Fireball? Anybody who has a Mac? Anybody? I mean, you didn't have to actually raise your hand. It was rhetorical. Um, <laughs> John sells T-shirts every year, and you don't even want to know how many T-shirts he sells or how much money he makes. But he sells T-shirts once a year or mm -hmm. like maybe twice a year? Yeah, once a year, I think. And sometimes they're new designs, and sometimes they're old designs. He just opens the website up and says, come and get them two weeks. When two weeks is over, I'll place the order. I'll... He probably doesn't personally put them in the bags, but somebody will ship them to you, and you'll get your $29, 100% cotton, one-color T-shirt. Um, we thought, that is genius. <laughs> like, that's what we need to do right mm -hmm. there. We don't know how many shirts you want to buy. We don't know what size you need. You know there are nine-plus variants for every shirt, Women, men's small all the way up to women's extra large, and sometimes men's extra small, sometimes men's 3X and up, mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, other sizes. That's a lot of different things to carry when you don't have a lot of capital to throw at inventory. So we, had, uh, we decided to do that. We said, you know, we'll give it another shot. We're going to do that. However, what if we also get some guest designs? People, you know, who more people know than mm -hmm. who know us. Right. Maybe like Bobby McKenna, who everyone seems to love on Dribbble, or I don't know, Ethan Marcotte, who invented responsive web design. Or maybe the father of the internet, Jeffrey Zeldin. <laughs> the father of web standards, I should say. I'm yeah. talking about Tim Berners-Lee. So those two ideas combined to really change our fortunes as far as the, the pixel workers was concerned. We, we decided to do those two things, put it out there, a little timer at the top, just so you understood how scarce the, this really was. Yeah, I mean, the thing was, like, if you want this shirt, you got to buy it now yeah. um, because it's not going to come back. So we, we put uh, one or two shirts up on the site at once. Uh, there was no stock. We had no inventory of anything. Um, and the story was you had, I think it was four weeks. We did like 28 days or something like that to buy these one or two shirts uh, on the site. The first month we did it, uh, Bobby McKenna, uh, who Nate mentioned, was a, a kid we knew on Dribble. He like, just graduated from Notre Dame. Um, you know, he started to make a name for himself on, uh, on, on the Internet a little bit. Now he's the designer at Vine. Uh, he's like the guy who comes with all the icons, all the interface, the whole thing. because of us. That was, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, and the first month we did this, uh, we went from selling, you know, like I said, 25 shirts a month to like 175 shirts a month. Um, we, I remember, you know, one day we like sat, we were sitting in my house, and like we were just like watching the orders come in, and it was it was like amazing because we'd never sold like more than like three or four shirts in a day at once. I think we launched we launched a shirt, and like it's like launching a shirt for some reason wasn't just like launch a shirt because like Nate's got to update the website and Jay's got to like write some copy for something like it was always an event. So we launched a shirt, and we're like, oh, it's like 2 o'clock, I'm starving. Like, so we drive out to Panera, and I have this PayPal app on my phone that dings. 
every time a sale happens. And like, all of a sudden, my phone is vibrating the table. Like it's yeah. like, you know how it like goes off the table, starts so walking, you know? And like, somebody must have tweeted about it, and then everybody tweeted about it, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, everybody was buying the shirts. And yeah. I was like, this is working, this is working. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we made another version of the site, I mean, because again, we had all the time in the world. Uh, so we completely redesigned the site, we came up with this crazy stuff. I mean, we, uh, that was one of our like tricks, it was one of our gimmicks early on, was like, design the craziest site you can come up with. Um, to try to like create an event that like would bring people to the website, um, we didn't really try anything simple with like UI design or design. It was always just like what, like how crazy can we get with this with this website? Um, you know, so this was like the second version of the site, and uh, fulfillment now looked like this um, instead of the previous uh, kind. So you know, we we went from Bobby McKenna the first month. Uh, Tyler Galpin, who's a, a Canadian designer, the second month. Ethan Marcotte, the third month, and then Jeffrey Zeldin. We we kept on like kind of getting more brazen with the people we would ask. Um, you know, we, we knew these guys from, like, you know, the Internet, but then we were like, well, what if we ask, like, Jessica Hish? Or, like, what if we ask Aaron Draplin? And, like, nobody said no. Everybody we asked was like, dude, I'll totally do that. Um, you one know, person who shall remain nameless. One person in the early days said no, and we will not talk about that person. Um, but you know who he is. Um, so, you know, fulfillment went looking, you know, it, was, it looked like this, and then it looked like that. And then it looked, this is like the third month. We were just having like, you know, massive stacks of T-shirts, uh, uh, you know, that we had to send out every month. And our fulfillment was like not sophisticated at this point. This was like me on my dining room table, like handwriting addresses on envelopes and like bringing a bag, an unstamped bag uh, of packages to the post office just one by one while people glared at me in line, like behind me, uh, you know, shipping all this stuff out. Matt and I are horrified. We're developers. <laughs> Surely we can do better than Jay handwriting you know, or yeah. using a Word document or, like, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah, customer service was, like, just through Gmail. Like, and, I mean, Pixel Workers for the first, I mean, I kind of, I felt, like, a little bit of ownership over this idea from the, from the very beginning uh, because it was mine, and I, like, totally didn't let any of it go. So it was, like, my design. I had the relationships with the designers. I was the one who was answering customer service. I was the one who was packing it up, picking it up, you know, doing press checks, the whole thing. Um, and that was a little stupid because, like, Pretty much like the minute I let it go, it got bigger and better and more awesome and more sophisticated. Um, you know, but for the first like year, I would say like I was United Pixel Workers, with the exception of making the actual website um, and having conversations about the business model. Like it was just the the mechanics of the business were like me in my spare time, um, which these guys like really I'm sure appreciated. <laughs> um, we made a site uh, for the 50 states. Uh, so if any of you have like a Colorado shirt, this is where it came from. Um, we're sorry your state is a rectangle. And there's <laughs> like really no good way to pixelate a rectangle and make it look make it look, look pixelated. Um, so this is kind of like version like 2.5 of the website. It was live for like a month maybe, and like we missed, again. Hey, one off websites. Yeah, I mean this this was again this was like to date the craziest site we'd ever done. I mean uh, CSS rotations, CSS animations on things. Like I know again I'm a developer. <laughs> um, you know, so this is this is a this is a pretty nuts site. Um, this is what this is what fulfillment started to look like uh, after the 50 states. Um, we ran an ad on uh, we got a, we got a, a pretty good podcast deal ad, and we ended up selling like 700 shirts in a week, which was like huge numbers for us at the time. Um, so that was a big deal. Um, then we made this. You want to talk about this? Um, this was a nightmare. Uh, it as everything else we did was a result of many painful discussions and theoretical like, wouldn't it be amazing if? This was our first responsive site, to January 2012. January 2012. First responsive site is a very newish concept at the time that I thought was a terrible idea. So and we were like, uh, hey, let's make an, so yeah, let's make an mean, e-commerce so site. This is our fourth version of the site, like not the V4, but like right. the fourth like totally from scratch site. And uh, In like a year and a half. Yeah, but, <laughs> but it was our playground. Like, I mean, it kind of made us like, at this point it was making us rent money for mm-hmm. like our office. We had an office at this point, it was making us rent money. Um, so... We were like, well, let's do that responsive thing. And Jay, like, being a designer, like, handed me this PSD. He's like, you know, responsive mm-hmm. <laughs> So That's right. So, like, this atrocity, if you had a 30-inch cinema display, it would go edge to edge, and maybe you wouldn't be able to see the headline anymore because of the ratio. Like, the shirt would be, like, life-size. I mean, like, you could, you could, <laughs> anyway. So I made this, like, uh, across a period of weeks, and then one entire all-nighter, like, I'm pushing through like all the crazy, I gotta redo this thing that I thought was working. And I mean, it was amazing and horrifying. And like every week we would put like 
38 megabytes of like images up on this website mm -hmm. that you can download on your poor, you know, broadband connection. Our MO there. pretty much was like, and this is pretty much true since before full stops, even since when we were working together at this previous company, it was like making websites that would work on image, on like devices that were going to like exist in like two years. To be fair, like, <laughs> to be fair, we knew our audience was designers. Right. You all have the latest browser, Supposedly. the fastest connection, the newest laptop, right? Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Big ass screens, you know, fancy iPhones, all the stuff that can power this stuff. So, you know, we, we, we got to do things we couldn't do with clients. You know, we got to try out technologies that didn't exist. Like, let's embed some fonts because that's a cool thing people are doing. And, like, you know, we love Futura and we'd like to actually see Futura on the website. Um, one of the big changes to the business model here, uh, and this will be important when we start talking about Cotton Bureau, was um, we started making t-shirts for other people. Um, up until this point, we were just making guest design t-shirts. Uh, people who were like designing shirts for pixel workers for us um, and doing our own stuff, you know, carrying on the city series. Um, at this point, we started making shirts for other companies. Um, so we made shirts for Dribble and for Ardeo and for Happy Cog and for uh, Verb. Um, you know, big web companies uh, and design-focused companies that we, you know, that we, we respected uh, and that we started to build a little bit of a, of a relationship with, um, you know, through going to conferences and, you know, having their designers do shirts for us in the past. Um, we were still doing shirts every month, uh, so it was still like, you know, once every, every four weeks, but instead of doing two shirts every month, we would do like 15 shirts every month, um, which was a lot of work once a month um, to do. And fulfillment, uh, again, you know, you remember the last couple of pictures started looking like this. Um, you know, this is when we started to touch like a thousand shirts a month, um, which was like scary volume for us. Um, you know, so once a month we would basically shut down full stop, shut down the design business and just like pack t-shirts, all of us, all hands on deck, uh, we would pack t-shirts. I wish you had a photo of like the 50 states thing because there was no surface of the office that wasn't covered with a different state shirt. Yeah. I mean, and they're all the same color. They're all the same color. You know, so like, you couldn't even tell what the shirt was without like picking it up and like, is that Alabama or is that Massachusetts? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what else is a rectangle? Wyoming. So a couple, couple of, anyway. Just save us a couple bucks. Yeah. Um, then we made this. Hold on. Uh, I want to go back. You want to go back? Let's go back. The, the previous version of the site, this was like around the time that Kickstarter existed, but I can't believe today that people would wait like 45 days for a shirt. Like you'd buy the shirt on day one and then forget you ordered something. And like it would show up like yeah. next year. And I, I mean, I'm grateful that everyone would did that. But the next version of the site that we just saw, we were like, how about like a week? Now that we're like, you know, now that we're cruising on this, let's go with a week instead of, you know, 30 days. So we, uh, we launched that last site in uh, January of 2012. We launched this site in September of 2012. <laughs> um, so yet another complete total overhaul. Um, this was like the let's do everything right that we did wrong on the last website, uh, especially with responsive design. Um, and like they mentioned, you know, we, we went from, you know, doing... Instead of doing 15 shirts at once, once a month, we did like two shirts a week, uh, you know, for for the for just just one week, just seven days. I mean, we learned that what happens when you sell it, when you pre-order, when you pre-sell a shirt for 28 days, what happens is there's like a big rush for about the first three days, and there's a big rush for the last three days, and then there's just like a gulf in the middle where nobody buys anything. Um, so we thought, well, let's just combine those three-day periods together, and you get a week to do it. Um, two and, weeks is probably better. That's like Cotton Bureau's two weeks. Cotton Bureau's two weeks. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> So we'll talk, you know, we'll talk about Cotton Bureau and how, you know, how the, all the stuff informed that. Um, you know, but this is, this was launched about a year and a half ago, and this is still, thank God, <laughs> the same version of the website that you see today. Um, so if you go there, it looks, you know, looks more or less just like this. Um, we kept about the same, maybe a little bit, you know, maybe we jumped up fulfillment a little bit, but, you know, this was like basically what fulfillment started to look like at Pixel Workers. Um, you know, this is what packages going out started to look like. Um, and this is what our, our inventory looks like now. So somewhere along the line, we started saying like, okay, we're like a real t-shirt brand now. Um, let's start having some stuff in stock. Um, you know, so this is basically, if you go into our studio today, this is basically what it looks like. T-shirts are different, but you know, there's about this much stuff on the, on the site. We, uh, we approached sort of the last, the, you know, the third version of the site, and this is what we officially call V4. Um, with the same, the same thought process that we've you know, done previously. We reached out to partners and we thought, What's the worst that could happen? You know, you miss all the shots you never take. Or in, you know, Denver's case, you miss all the shots you take, too. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, we, we created with version 3 and 4, like, a real platform. Like, we evolved it from a thing that we did to a thing that encompassed a lot of people. And that, that really planted a lot of seeds for what ultimately became Cotton Beer. We thought, 
we can we can enable other people to come into this. Let's let's get a blog out there. Like we don't have enough blogs to maintain yet, so let's put <laughs> another one out there and write some stuff. And those things, you know, got a lot of traction sometimes and brought people to the site. We tried a job board. That kind of didn't really work. I thought it was a bad idea from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's half a dozen things like Pixelivery didn't even get a mention tonight because it came and went and we killed it because it wasn't working. Another t shirt brand that we had. So this year, that year for Pixel Workers was just we're going to do everything and we're going to try to like, we're going to try to do it all. And uh, we'll talk about why that's a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I wanted to mention a little bit about community uh, too, you know, because th this, you know, we joke about this being like some fake union or something, but, um, you know, for some reason, and we don't know why. I mean, we have you know a couple ideas why, um, but this thing really took off, and people really started to believe in it. Um, you know, and we we became like accidental like t-shirt kingpins uh, in the design community, um, which we never intended. I mean, you know, we you know we talk about how different we are. I mean, one thing that we really agreed on at the beginning was like how to be the best web design shop we could be. Um, you know, how to how to be the best client services company we could be. And then all of a sudden, we're like, a, we're a product company now. Uh, you know, we're, we're making a physical product. Um, that was just sort of like some like off the cuff idea, you know, three years or now four years earlier. Um, and it became something that like people really believe in. Like people really, uh, you know, the, it's, it's become this kind of unifying like rallying cry for, for web design, uh, which is, is awesome. And, it, and it's, you know, we, we're still releasing new cities. I mean, we made, we've made like Richmond and like Sydney, Australia. Um, we just made a shirt for like Mo like Bozeman, Montana, um, no. not not too long yet, <laughs> for real. Um, you know we have we have this new model. It's not, it's not Monday. Monday. It's, it's gonna be Monday. Yeah, tell them Monday, okay? Yeah. yeah. Um, Eighteen-year-olds love you even more. <laughs> Technically, it's all of Montana. We talked about it just Bozeman. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, but we have this new model where basically, if you don't see your city, you can sponsor your city. Um, if your city's not in stock anymore, you can sponsor your city. Um, you know, that's a, a new model uh, for, you know, for what we're doing. Um, pixel workers in the last, you, you want to talk about pixel workers now? Like sort of where we are now? Okay, here's what I want to do. Do all I right. those 15 minutes? 15 minutes, all right. Okay, let's, so let's I want to do a quick interlude. Okay. And then we'll get to Cotton Bureau. All right. I want to talk about like how I became a businessman. Okay. <laughs> so, like if you remember back at the beginning, like I am not a businessman. And in fact, I'm extremely introverted. And like, but I read a lot of books. And I, you know, we, we kind of like, we worked at it. Like it was very intentional. Um, some of the books that I was reading were about, you know, how to, how to run a business, you know, the E-Myth Revisited, and like a, a lot of different books about how you should handle your business. And so we, like, we really tried everything. We were just doing all the things. And in 2013, I thought, at the beginning, we traded, like, our time in order to avoid having to give money that we didn't have. And hopefully, eventually, we get money that we can trade other people we could get a real lawyer. Instead of writing our own contracts, we can have a lawyer write our contracts. And instead of my wife doing the accounting, we could hire an accountant. Mm -hmm. And that was like, 2013 was that. And we are at the tail end of sort of the professionalization process. I shouldn't say the tail end. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel, and we don't know what's beyond the tunnel, but like we think we might have, have climbed out of the hole that we put ourselves in when we started doing all these different things. I thought to myself, at some point, a, a flip, a bit flipped, or a switch was flipped in my head that said, I'm a developer to, I run businesses. Like, I run a business, now I kind of run more businesses. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about how pixel workers became a more serious thing for us. <clears throat> Part of that was, we need to do things the right way. We absolutely need to do things the right way. We can't just do this, like, by the seat of our pants anymore. And in that year, we were doing everything by the seat of our pants. And just in the week before... We came out here. We, are you ready for this? Sit. We got a cease and desist that we had to deal with, with our lawyers mm -hmm. for Cotton Bureau. We talked to our landlord about our lease ending in June and possibly getting a new and bigger space that we could have co-working in or conferences in or whatever. I mean, he, he wanted to start a co-working business with us. It wasn't yet. We uh, launched a major new feature for Cotton Bureau, a cart mm -hmm. so you can buy as many shirts as you want at one time, all kinds of different designs. Remember that part. That's a very important part. Uh, we ended our last client. I mean, we haven't gotten to that yet, but full yeah. stop is kind of like we killed full stop. Uh, yeah, and spoiler we alert, we killed full stop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we had our last client project 
uh, contract expire just last week. Mm-hmm. We had a pretty serious internal fight between yeah, us. Yeah, I mean, we had another knockdown, drag uh-huh. out, like, I hate you, don't yeah. want to talk to me again. Right. Sort of. We prepared for this talk. Yeah, we, we did some preparation for yeah. this talk. We talked about this talk. Yeah. We talked about it a few. I'm missing, like, two things. There's two, like, important things, but... Yeah, I mean, that's, that's like a week in the life of that's a, us. That I mean, was like a normal week. Uh, we, you know, signed on a couple new sponsors mm-hmm. for Pixel Workers. We, I know they're like, I, know, I have a kind of a list right here. We did so many things in the last week, and that's what we don't want to do anymore. Yeah. 2013 was, we're businessmen. We can start businesses all the time. And 2014 <laughs> is like, that's a terrible idea. Let's do one <laughs> business. Stop starting businesses. So 2014 is going to be the year of Patent Bureau. And, you know, like a, a steady improvement in, in the, you know, the pixel workers uh, empire. In the time we have left, let's talk about Cotton Bureau, because uh, that's what we do now. That is who we are. Um, you may know us as pixel workers. Uh, we think of ourselves as Cotton Bureau now. Um, with pixel workers, we made t-shirts, you know, we started to make t-shirts for other people, guest designers, other companies, things like that. Um, but it was a, it started to become, I mean, pixel workers is kind of an, you know, it's an egalitarian idea. You know, it's, it, this is by us, for us, all of us. You know, we, we come from this industry. Um, you know, anyone who, who's part of this can, can, can participate. Uh, however, you probably wouldn't be able to design a shirt for us <laughs> because either, you know, you didn't have enough Twitter followers or, you know, you, you couldn't help us sell a bunch of T-shirts. Um, so the process of making shirts for pixel workers or with pixel workers uh, was kind of like an elitist experience. Um, you know, we didn't love that, like, brand-wise. And we always got asked by people, like, well, can you make my T-shirt? Um, and they would send us their design. And it might be a kick-ass design, but, you know, they didn't have a profile. They didn't really have, um, you know, much to bring beyond just the design itself. Um, and we were, you know, too small at the time to really kind of give them a run um, because we knew if we put somebody out there who, you know, who didn't quite have the audience, um, well, we didn't really have the audience either, uh, so we'd sell probably, like, eight t-shirts uh, and that and believe me we have people with much bigger profiles than that sell eight t-shirts uh, from time to time um, you know so we always had to turn those people down um, and we thought about like well what if we kind of turn that into a business I mean what if we kind of take all the bits and pieces from what we learned as pixel workers and and make it an engine for designers uh, for at the time the idea was for anybody to, to make a t-shirt um, we refined the idea over time, and we, we kicked it around for probably a period of, of a year or so before we ever started designing it or developing it. Um, and what it became was it's a curate, heavily curated, uh, crowdfunded T-shirt community for designers. Um, so the concept is you're a graphic designer or an illustrator, um, and you have something just sitting in a folder somewhere. Maybe it's a rejected uh, design from a, from a client. Um, maybe it's just some sketch that you, that you put together. Um, maybe it's an idea for a T-shirt brand of your own. Um, but you don't know how to get that from concept to reality um, because making t-shirts is a just enormous pain in the ass. <laughs> um, you and need we're to, kinda good at it. and now we're good at it. I mean, we, you know, we, we've sold tens of thousands of t-shirts by the, you know, by the, the time we, we started Cotton Bureau. Um, so the idea was this, I mean, you, you send us your design uh, and we take a look at it and we evaluate it. Um, we make sure it's right for us because like I said, we're heavily curated. Um, we, we turn down probably 70 or 80% of what comes in the door. Because um, it's just not up to snuff with what we want to see on the site. Um, but if it's good enough, we we work with you to determine, um, you know, what kind of ink uh, the shirt's going to be printed with, what kind of shirt fabric it's going to be going to be printed on. We use American Apparel shirts, which are great, great T-shirts. Um, we use some pretty sophisticated ink techniques, which a lot of other, you know, a lot of these other kind of like online make your own T-shirt stuff, you know, they don't use. Um, we develop a, a profit margin with you, so we tell you, you know, this many colors on this kind of a shirt, it's going to be twenty bucks. And you say, I want six bucks on top of that. So then we set the price of your shirt at $26. Um, and you get two weeks on the site to sell 25 shirts or more. Um, if you don't sell 25, we don't make the shirt. Uh, if you do sell 25 or more, we make the shirt, we print it, we deal with all the customer service. You know, So if we, by mistake, send a medium to somebody in Sweden and they ordered a large, well, that's not your problem, that's our problem. Um, and then we either send straight to your bank account or to your PayPal, uh, we send you your cut of the profit. So if you sell 25 shirts, and your profit margin was five bucks, we send you 125 bucks. Um, and that's the business. Um, we launched it last June to a ton of fanfare, more than we ever expected. Um, our goal on day one was to sell, was to have one shirt make it all the way to 25 on day one. Uh, and seven shirts made it all the way to 25 on day one. Um, we got a big link from a, from a, a friend with a, a pretty, pretty notable blog um, that helped us out a lot. All of our friends that we'd made during the course of Pixel Workers uh, really pitched in and helped us out. I mean, that's, that's a big uh, point that we wanted to make here is 
if we had to like launch Cotton Bureau from zero when nobody knew who we were, um, it probably wouldn't have flown that far. I mean, kind of you know, think about like trying to like throw a paper airplane off of like this stage. It's going to go like 12 feet and then fall to the ground. Um, but we didn't. We weren't standing on a stage. We were standing on like a 20-story building with pixel workers. You know, we had 8,000 followers and a big mailing list, um, and this huge you know brand that, that we built over the course of three years. That we used it as a platform. Like we got this new thing. We're doing this new thing. Um, you know, submit your designs when you know when we launch. It's a big deal. Um, and we had a massive, massive launch. And, you know, things kind of tailed off after that. But um, you know, we hit the ground running. Um, and to take things back to, to full stop for for a minute. Um, we always knew that Cotton Bureau could be a self-sufficient business. We knew it could stand on its own. We, we, we refer to it in, internally as a threadless-sized business. I mean, we, had, we knew that it had that much potential. Um, but it was never going to reach its potential if we were doing with, dealing with client work stuff uh, all the time and dealing with t-shirts in our part-time. Um, we had uh, to kind of bring this totally full circle. Um, our first client, that state university in Massachusetts, um, they were up for redesign. And they were guaranteeing us the job. Um, and the budget was going to be twice the size uh, this time, uh, which was enough to sustain us for basically two years. And we knew, like, we, uh, they were like, you know, help us write the RFP. Or, you know, we're going to tailor it to you guys. We're, you know, they were state university, so they needed to bid it out. Um, but they tried, as, you know, as, as best they could, at least our contact there, you know, tried as best they could to just basically aim the job right at us. Um, you know, so we put together a proposal. We went up to Massachusetts to pitch it. We didn't get the job. Uh, they gave it to somebody else. And we've been saying up until this point, if we get the job, this is like our last big score. You know, we're going to do this. We're going to walk away from client work with like 300 grand in our pocket. And we're going to build the most amazing EDU site ever. Like, right. Okay. Just. I mean, that. I guess yeah. Um, but that was that was the plan. It's like we're going to get this client. And we're going to you know we're going to do this. We're going to we're going to use that money to like ramp up Cotton Bureau and make that our full time thing. Um, and and like that's what that's our plan. That's what we're going to do because that's you know there's no way we're not going to get the job right. Um, and we said, well, like plan B, like what if, what if we don't get the job? And it's like, well, you know what? We're just going to walk away anyway. And I got a phone call from Nate. I think it was like a Friday or whatever. Um, and he was like, yeah, I got a call. I got, a, I got an email from Melissa. Like we didn't get Westfield. We didn't get the job. And I was kind of like silent for a second. And I was like, well, I guess that's it then. We're done. <laughs> and uh, maybe it was a Thursday. Maybe it was a Thursday. And like the next day, yeah. We took down the full stop interactive.com site and we put up an open letter and we said, as of November 8th, 2013, we are no longer accepting client sites. Um, and there was about another thousand words after that uh, with, you know, with our reason why, uh, talking, about, <laughs> talking about how we were going full time on Cotton Bureau and Pixel Workers. Um, you know, so that was about three, four months ago. And just, you know, we mentioned it before, last, I think Friday or so was our, the, the last day of maintenance for our last client. Um, you know, so we are now. Full time cop bureau. The day we the day we mentioned that, uh, the day we we put on the site uh, that we were done. I think we were selling maybe like six or seven hundred shirts a month on Cotton Bureau. Um, in the last thirty days, we've sold about nineteen hundred and twenty five shirts on Cotton Bureau. Um, and you know, it's the numbers keep going up. You know, the the business has matured. I mean, the last couple of months we've launched some key features. Now that we don't have any client work to do anymore, um, you know, we've launched some huge features that we that have been on the product roadmap for like a year, but we just never could touch them because we didn't have the time. Um, you know, so we're like we're cranking out features. The business is getting bigger, um, and this is, this is what we do now. And I want to touch just for a second on sort of like the very real, you know, internal politics of like full stop. I mean, in, in December 2012, we thought like you know what, it might be time for clients to just I don't think so. Like we're not, they're not coming in. Like it's not working out. Like the size projects we need with the budgets and the right people. Like it was such a narrow band. It's like a spatial, like entering Earth's atmosphere. Like you can't go too too vertical; you're gonna burn out. You'll skip off if you're, you're like you had. We were so picky. I mean, mm -hmm. to be honest. We were yeah, really picky. yeah, we're really picky. And we thought this is it. And then a guy emailed us and he said, like, I got the money. Remember, I emailed you last year. Like, I got the money. Like, let's do it. We're like, let you know, it's like Christmas. Like, let's like we'll deal with that in January. And and then like twelve leads showed up. Like, yeah. And they were like big projects. I mean, there were somewhere between a half a million and a million dollars in leads. In January and we're like okay who can we call we'll get like that guy and that guy and like you might have to do more creative direction you can't do mm -hmm. as much design like we got all these projects and if you've ever run a company or been like internal to a company and seen the sales process you'll know that we were prematurely excited on this because <laughs> none of those leads worked out I mean like two or three of them did and we kept going with clients but we should have known that like 
most of those were going to fall through. Yeah. And yet for the entire year of 2013, we were kind of like waiting on that job at the end of the year. Like, well, those other ones fell through, but this one is a lock. Like, like the, we, we're writing half of the RFP. Mm-hmm. Like, Sirens just was, singing us into the rocks. Yeah. <laughs> and we didn't get the job. And, I mean, there was no controversy internally. Mm-hmm. It was just like, okay, we're done. But at the same time, I am sort of uh, extremely confident about like what we can do together, what, you know, what our capability is. And Jay's a warrior. I mean, if it can go wrong, it will go wrong, mm-hmm. you know? And together, you know, we sort of like, you know, we balance each other. But there was, you know, there was concern that maybe like, maybe we're doing the wrong thing here. Mm-hmm. Like, who knows? And I said, you know, I said like, no, we got to like, let's, like, you know, we can't, we can't keep pushing this off. Like, we just got to like, we got to go for it this yeah. time. Yeah, which is the same conversation we had when we started full stop was like, you know, I was the one who was like, we got to wait, we got to wait, we got to wait. And Nate was like, let's, let's quit now. Let's quit today. Let's, let's walk in there and quit. But we're, I mean, we're <laughs> setting almost everything to, to ground zero. I mean, maybe we're like 40% of our revenue, but there was a huge gap to make up. And we thought, you know, if we give it full-time effort, we can, we can pull full-time revenue out of this. Mm-hmm. And, you know, despite all the sort of, we, we didn't touch on most of the, you know, the lows of the past five years, but there were lows too. I mean, there were there were a lot of failures. Yeah, <laughs> There's I mean, a lot of stuff in the garbage. Ninety percent of our you know business iceberg is under the water. I mean, most of the things didn't work out, and that can be stressful. And mm-hmm. like dealing with clients can be stressful. And you know, I I kind of thought we can do it all. We can do the clients. We can do the products. Like we got a great you know we have some leads out there. We can still do everything. But in the interest of like harmony, in the interest of like a guy I'd become very good friends with over five years, in the interest of the roles within the company. One thing we didn't talk about was that our third, you know, our silent third, who's not here as usual, uh, he never really was on the same page as us. He was doing, he was doing pixel workers when we were doing client stuff, or he was building Cotton Bureau when we were doing mm-hmm. pixel workers. And it's just, we really wanted to be a team in the full sense of the word. We wanted to just everyone pushing on the same way and no deflected momentum off to the side. Just everyone pushing the same way. And uh, that's where we are you know, now. Jay had been sort of through some like nasty stuff with other businesses, mm-hmm. and we didn't want it, that to be like us. So we, you know, everybody pulling in the same harness, and so far, <laughs> so good. You know, we think we've cleared the mountain. As I was saying earlier, we we saw the mountain in the distance. <coughs> we yanked back on the on the stick, and we were like, we just skimmed over the top of the budgetary January February mountain, and we're counting on all of you <laughs> <laughs> to have a good summer, and you know. Holiday season. Yeah, we may be the ones sitting on stage, but we are not rich. <laughs> uh, I think that's it. Is that all, all we got? Yeah, we're we probably like 10 minutes over. We got it. You said you like to talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow through on that promise. Thanks, guys. Um, we and thanks to AIGA for having us out here. I mean, it's, we, we don't get a ton of, you know, we don't talk very often. And it's, it's awesome that, you know, we got invited out here to be the headliner, uh, you know, to be the only show tonight. So uh, <laughs> thanks for having us out. So we did what we just want to squeeze in a, a few <laughs> Q&A questions um, uh, to give the audience the time for that. Um, we are kind of limited on time, so we can only take a few. But any questions? Somebody ask a question. Not everybody at once. Like, just one yeah, at a time. Yeah, jeez. OK. We so spent all day pass. with Chris yesterday. Now he's going to be the one who asked the question. the same question you asked the other day. Like, new question. New question. Different question. How do you develop the grit to push through with your vision? So you started with these principles and this mantra. And anybody who's a designer or owns a business at some point finally hits a place where they go, fine. That, you know, just. Give them what they want, or let's do this, or take we this job. We literally never it's money. said that ever. Yeah, I mean it's, I mean, and, it's and that's what I mean. How did you yeah. develop the grit to when times are lean, or there's payroll, or the client is pushing hard back on something? What was it that kept you pushing through and not caving from a, you know, a personality, or a, I don't, I don't know what it is. I guess that's what I'm asking. What is it that made you push through? All right. Um, have, yeah, you got an answer for this. I got an answer. All so, right. so, the first presentation I wrote out to give tonight was totally different. It was going to be develop a skill, start a side project, you know, create a business. And you don't have to create a business first. That doesn't have to be you. And that might be me or that might be Jay, but mm-hmm. like maybe you just want to pick up a new skill. Like in order, I picked up HTML and then like a little bit of CSS 
and like a whole lot of CSS and a little bit of JavaScript mm -hmm. and some PHP and then like some business skills. And like it was one skill at a time. It wasn't like I have all the skills all of a sudden and now like, you know, let's go do the business. It was pick up a couple skills mm -hmm. and then as a business we kind of, you know, created some side projects. We didn't have to start from zero with the third side project. It just became, you know, there's a there's always a path. So I don't know that like grit is necessarily I think a lot of it is trust I mean it's trust all over the place it's like it's trust in your process it's trust in your principles it's trust in your relationship with your clients your client trusting you um, and it, you know like we talked about yesterday I mean it's it's trust in the process of finding the right clients I mean we know when you ask like well when, when a client like really tries to push through like I don't know how many clients we had that tried to push through um, you know because we were pretty upfront about like look like here's who we are and here's how we work and like if you're not down with that like let us know now because we'll gladly refer to you you know refer you to somebody else i mean i don't think we're i i wanted to say i hope we're not naive enough to sit here and say this is what we did and go and do likewise yeah i mean a, a very good friend of ours who we talked about you know collaborating on projects with and doing some crazy stuff with his philosophy is the client's always right always they're always right and that's not our philosophy. our philosophy is the client is very <laughs> frequently wrong uh you know it's you know, and, and they're hiring you because they're wrong. They're hiring you because they don't know how to do what you do. Um, they know their business and, and, you know, you know yours. We know, you know, we know ours. Um, and as long as the relationship is founded on that balance, um, you know, that's, that's where things are successful. So as long as, I mean, maybe you weren't born with grit. Maybe you can't, you've tried and you can't develop grit. Well, maybe that's not who you are. Maybe you're, like, super friendly. And that might be, you know, that might be... Yeah, maybe you love to ask questions. You know, so maybe it's a false premise. You know, maybe you don't need to develop grit. And if you do, like, we're probably not the right people to ask about how to do it. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, neither of us are like, afraid. <laughs> neither of us are afraid to be the bad cop. And you know, we switch off we fight roles. To see who could be the bad. Cop. Yeah, we both want to be the bad cop, but we're both, you know, we're we're both good at being both the good cop and the bad cop. And you know, that's it worked for us. Any other questions? Somebody ask a question. Yeah, uh, so really quickly, how, here's how that works. Uh, we don't keep city shirts in stock. Any, we, don't, we don't buy our own shirts anymore. Um, this is a quick way to say it. Uh, basically, we got to the point, I mean, seriously, we got to the point where we had so many shirts on the site that we couldn't possibly keep them all in stock at once. Um, you know, we've done probably six dozen uh, different cities uh, across the country and the world, um, not counting the state's stuff at all. Um, so what we did was we came up with this local sponsorship idea. So, you know, you're from Erie, let's say, and you want to make an Erie, Pennsylvania shirt. Um, well, you can make an Erie, Pennsylvania shirt. You know, you pay us the money. Basically, it's, you know, our, these sponsorships start at 500 bucks. We have a $500 level and a $1,000 level. Um, you give us 500 bucks, we use that 500 bucks to buy stock. Uh, and we design the shirt. If it's a new city, we'll design the shirt for you. We'll work, you know, with you or the, you know, the community in order to, to develop it. Um, if it's a shirt that's just out of stock, like the Denver shirt, uh, if anybody wants to sponsor the Denver shirt, uh, let us know. Um, uh, although even though we brought, you know, we printed up 30 of them just for this talk and brought them here. But uh, the Denver shirt is not in stock right now on the site. Uh, so if, you know, you're a company in Denver, you want to, you know, you want to sponsor it, you contact us, you give us 500 bucks, we buy 50 t-shirts, uh, and then we say it's sponsored by your company. And you get the chance to put stuff in the bag, you know, stickers or coupons or whatever, you know, you want to do. Um, you know, we pimp you on Twitter and our mailing list, and you get the sponsorship until your shirts run out, uh, and you get a discount on the site. Um, so that's the sponsorship program. That's what Pixel Workers is kind of now. We have, uh, at this time, right now we have about like 15 shirts on the site that are sponsored and probably another 10 like in the process. And I'm sure the rest are right behind them. They just haven't heard yet. <laughs> right. Is vote I thought Dwayne was raising his hand. I'm, I'm raising it for... Uh, I guess it's I for it. me. For um, I just want to say thank you guys for coming down here. Should Thanks for having you guys us. talk, yeah. Um, so really quick, you spoke to, you know, this idea that you had to make shirts for, you know, those different kind of areas and you know, companies like that. Mm -hmm. But I have to think that you guys probably had lots of other ideas kind of in this kind of area. And like, what was the moment that you saw that you're like, you were going to, to really pull the trigger on this idea that you're going to make these shirts or you're going to do for this idea? I'm just kind of wondering what you guys. Are you asking was. about pixel workers or cotton beer or both? Kind of both, because yeah. I'm sure that you guys had other ideas coming up to that idea. You or have no idea. Right now, you have absolutely <laughs> no idea. Yeah, but it's kind of like when you think of that idea, right. you're like, man, this, this could potentially work and yeah. may be able to actually make it happen. 
but maybe I shouldn't. It's kind of like, when is that moment that you say, I'm going to go for this? You have to answer more quickly. I'm going to jump in. Like, you have to go. I go. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so for me, ideas are worthless. Like, I'm total 37 signal disciple. I'm like, anybody can have an idea. Like, it's all the execution. Like, who cares? Uh, and Jay loves to come up with ideas. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty good partnership in that I'm like, all right, well, we'll, like, go through your ideas and try to, like, do a little uh, a filtering on them. Mm -hmm. And we kind of, like, pick the ones we like the best. We've picked a lot of ideas, though, that we like. And I could, like, we could tick them off. And we've done, like, previous, you know, other, other previous You've never heard of any of them. Of <laughs> things you've never heard of that we tried and, like, we failed. But on the other hand, like, I got kids, you know, and I kind of think that kids' iPhone, like, games are, like, not all that they can be sometimes. Or, like, apps aren't all that they can be. Like, if you've ever seen the human body tiny bop app, like, that's amazing. And I thought, well, maybe we could do, like, car bingo. Or, like, you know, who, I'm, like, I'll throw these out there and you guys take them so my kids can have them. But, like, that idea could have been just as successful. You know, we've got a great designer. We've got an iOS developer. And, like, I could find something to do. You know, I'll just, I'll just keep throwing <laughs> ideas. So, really, it's a matter of, like, you throw the ideas out there. You kind of, like, pick a couple. And they keep mutating. Like, that's the bottom line for us is, like, this is survival of the fittest. Mm -hmm. Put an idea out there. We try it. Cotton Bureau was like strict MVP. I mean, like everything was done over email. We like posted a lot of stuff manually. We picked, you know, Amazon as like, you know, you pay through Amazon. MVP stands for minimally viable product Sorry, for all you people who are not like yeah. software people out there. <laughs> um, so, basically, it means like we built the least we could possibly yeah. build to get it live. Yeah, and we brought in help for it. You know, we brought in, this was when we thought we were going to do everything. So we brought in Johannes Ma, and he's, you know, did all the front end. I barely did any of it. Mm -hmm. And we brought in Melissa Frost, the, you know, amazing Brad Frost wife. I'm sorry, I meant the amazing Melissa Frost, Brad Frost wife. Yeah. Uh, and she, like, did all the, you know, a lot of customer service and design submission handling while we were busy, you know, doing client stuff. I mean, uh, this is probably a good time to mention something we, we wanted to talk about here, where there's a ceiling to how much money you can make when you're a client services company, and you want to stay three people. Um, there's, only, there's a ceiling on how much money people are going to pay for the website. There's a ceiling on how many projects you can do at once. Um, and we basically hit that ceiling. Um, and we were kind of, you know, working like 125% of the effort for like 75% of the money. Um, you know, we weren't really making the money we wanted to make, and we were working like way too goddamn hard. Um, with Cotton Bureau, we saw, you know, we can do 100% of the work and make 200% of the money, or 300% of the money that we need, or 500% of the money we need. The, the, what we're doing scales financially uh, and volume-wise like way beyond like, a point where the four of us like, need extra help. You know, we could double the volume that we do on Cotton Bureau tomorrow and like, not freak out, um, you know, not have to bring in a, 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 any extra help. And if we do, it's like in these easy, easily little like, burstable pockets where it's like, we need an extra hand on deck to pack. You know, or we need somebody to like help me with, with design submissions. Um, and there's, we don't know where the ceiling of Cotton Bureau is. So it's like, you know, that was a factor in the decision where it's like, we know basically where the ceiling is on web design uh, as a client service, but we don't know where the ceiling is on t-shirts. We haven't even approached it yet with, with Pixel Workers. I mean, part of the deal with Pixel Workers is it's for us, like, you know, and that's, that's kind of it. Like, if you're not in this industry, um, you're not going to buy a t-shirt because you just don't get it. It's not for you. Um, and that's great in like creating the brand and like increasing the, the, the affinity for like for that product. But with Cotton Bureau, it's like your mom could buy a T-shirt, and you know her twenty five bucks is just as good as yours. Uh, you know because it's it's not it's not insular like that. Um, you know so we basically you know we kind of took the lid off of our business uh, with with Cotton Bureau, um, and it was it was really enticing and it was reachable because it was a. You know, we come up, let's say, let's, you know, let's say Car Bingo, right? You know, just as, as an idea, or any, any iPhone app, right? Well, like, we kind of dipped our toes in, like, iOS a little bit, but, like, we knew how to make websites. We know how to make T-shirts. And this project, Cotton Bureau, is about T-shirts, and it's about websites. Two things we knew a whole lot about. And, we, you know, we need to learn a lot of things on top of that. But um, we already had the, the prerequisite skills in order to build it. Um, you know, so that's why it won out over a lot of, the other ideas, and there are a lot of ideas that we either tried or didn't try. Um, I mean, the idea thing really was sort of the problem with clients for us because we'd go into a client and they'd ask us to paint the room, mm -hmm. and we'd be tearing down the drywall. And they're like, whoa, like, 
I just wanted you guys to think through and like, and we're like, you consider this business model, or what if? But yeah. I'm just like, hold on a second. What if we combine the kitchen and the living room? And it's like, whoa, I just want a new carpet. Like, so for us, Cotton Bureau and, and Pixel Workers allow us to tweak and tweak and tweak and, you know, mutate these things and just let them see where they go. I mean, Pixel Workers is, like, unidentifiable today from, like, where we started. It's a completely different business. And it's been, like, three other separate different businesses in between then and now. Um, you know, that's something that's that we love about, like, where Cotton Bureau can grow. You know, it can go. It's just... Who the hell knows what's going to be in a year, you know? But this is what it is right now, and it's working. Um, it might not work forever, and then we'll change it. We'll do something else. That's what we've done now. I mean, we've went from let's start a web design business less than five years ago to we make T-shirts for a living and sell them on the internet. Like, <laughs> it's, it's I mean, it's it's that's pretty reductionist, but like that's about what that's what we are now. You know, we we sell T-shirts on the internet to people. I mean, my family, for what it's worth. Can't believe that this happened. Like, so you have, like, how do you feed your children? You have difficulty <laughs> explaining the idea of like making websites, but you can say like you know how like Twitter and like Facebook and stuff like that. Like that's what we do. Like for other people, sometimes for them, you know. And now it's like, wait, you sell T-shirts? Like, are you are you serious? Mm -hmm. how, wait, how much? <laughs> but I mean, I know I'm getting like so far off the question now. It, 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 you can't even see it anymore. Um, but you know, that's, welcome to talking to us. <laughs> <laughs> We good? Anybody else? You had a food truck story or a restaurant story? Well, how about, do we have time? How much time we got? You're the boss. Me, we got, we got, you're the boss. That's right. I am the boss. <laughs> Let me say um, one thing. And then we've, got, we've got time for a restaurant story, sure. All right. All right. You, I, I'm going to say one thing, and then you can leave, take us home. Okay. Uh, my sort of evolved philosophy as far as, like, our business is concerned today is, I come in every day, or sometimes I don't, and I want to like, I want that to be a good day. Mm -hmm. I want to like enjoy it. We go, you know, get something to eat, or we hang out. We, you know, build some feature or whatever. But, like, I'm not building a business for like my grandkids. I'm not, you know, I'm not building a business to sell it to somebody someday. Like, I'm building a business for today. Like, I want today to be good, and I want you know this relationship right here to be good, and I want you know I want to enjoy the work that we do. I want to make sure that we feel proud of the work that we do. And that's that's all it is anymore. Like so, wherever Cotton Bureau goes, wherever Pixel Workers goes, like that for me and hopefully for all of us there is like, we just want to really mm. enjoy each day that we do this. Um, that was uplifting. So now I'll end on yeah, a downer. So, now I'm um, <laughs> so it's, it's the other side of the coin. That's yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know, Nate and I are a great partnership. I mean, even though we're nothing alike, um, I had a bad business partnership, which is what the, the restaurant story is. So um, I'm really into cooking. Like really, really, really into cooking and kitchen culture, uh, restaurant culture, things like that. Um, when I moved back to Pittsburgh uh, in 2007, uh, the, the, the best known chef in Pittsburgh, and still today the best known chef in Pittsburgh, a guy by the name of Kevin Souza, um, was moving from one restaurant to another. His new place was going to be in my neighborhood. Um, uh, if you guys are into restaurants at all, Kevin has uh, very recently, um, he has the biggest, most successful restaurant-related Kickstarter project in history. Uh, he got three hundred thousand uh, dollars to build a, a restaurant in a super, like, bombed-out old, like, steel town uh, outside of Pittsburgh. Um, so he's he's kind of made a name for himself uh, outside of Pittsburgh. But he was moving from one restaurant to another, uh, and a friend of a friend was the the fine dining critic for our local paper. Uh, and I was like, hey, why don't you like hook me up with Kevin? Um, I'm gonna offer to work for him in the kitchen for free, just like you know, a couple days a week. Uh, maybe on the weekends. I had a job as when I was working with Nate. You know, made a lot. You know, made de you know decent amount of living. You know, so I didn't really need any money from working in the kitchen. I was just like, you know, let me get the experience. Let me do it for free. Um, you know, so I did. And you know, I wasn't like banging pots and pans on the line or anything, or you know, swearing at anybody. But I was like, you know, doing like little stuff around the kitchen, like little prep work and like salads and desserts and things like that. Um, over that time, like Kevin and I became really good friends, uh, and I became his like go-to like creative consultant, basically. Um, when he left that restaurant to start his very own restaurant, uh, which became kind of like patient zero for like this restaurant explosion in Pittsburgh, like, we're having like a real restaurant moment right now, uh, and his was the first. His was the first one. Um, I was the first person outside of his family that he told uh, that he was that he was going to do this. And together, over the next like two years, I was involved in like the planning of all this stuff. Um, a lot of the stuff that came out of our conversations ended up in this place, and it was you know just the beginning of, of a food revolution in town. Um, I was not an owner of that place, uh, though, but that place opened up and it was like the best restaurant in Pittsburgh for, you know, the first year or whatever. Everybody went nuts over it. Um, I got married there. Um, our, our ceremony was there. Uh, and the food there uh, at, our, at our wedding happened to be 
uh, barbecue. We wanted to do we wanted to do kind of like a southern barbecue like style thing. So like you know brisket and fried chicken and cornbread, mac and cheese, all that stuff. Um, so about a couple months later, Kevin calls me, and he's like, "Hey, like I got some developers talking to me about a new place. Uh, why don't we basically turn your wedding food into a restaurant? Like let's do like a barbecue joint." Um, so I was like, "Shit, let's you know let's do it." And he wanted me to be involved. He wanted me to be an owner. Um, I didn't have any money to invest, so I basically traded equity. I traded like effort for equity. Um, ended up being a 15% owner of that place. So over the course of the next maybe 10 months, we like developed this barbecue joint uh, in Pittsburgh. Like fancy barbecue, fancy fried chicken, the whole thing. Uh, it was basically like my concept. Uh, it, I ended up naming half the place. I designed like the interior, um, you know, the, the the walls, the whole concept, the floor plan, you know, whatever. Um, in the middle of that, uh, he found an old a hot dog shop that had been like it had been around since 1915 but it had been through like various owners um, and it was vacant and it was for sale so he was like let's open up a hot dog shop too and I was like let's open up a hot dog shop too um, so like Kevin got in touch with those owners and like you know we, we put that together too basically at the same time uh, we ended up launching these two places uh, within weeks of each other um, so one was like modern awesome hot dogs awesome fries um, and the other place was was, uh, was barbecue and fried chicken. Uh, we ended up actually opening up a bar on top of the, the barbecue place too. Um, so like I went from like, hey, like maybe let me work for you for free in the kitchen to like the part, the 15% owner of like two restaurants and a bar within the span of like two years. Um, and this was all at the time, you know, where we were, we were, I was also, I was going to you know, say, a little comic strip speech bubble, like, meanwhile, it's full stop. Yeah. Where's Jay at? Right. <laughs> right. So. You know, I'm like, hey, Jay wants us to do another website. Oh, great. How much do we get paid? Oh, you don't get paid. You get yeah. hot dogs. Yeah, you get free food. <laughs> They're really good hot dogs. They're really good hot dogs. Uh, but, you know, so, you know, it took me away for a significant percentage of the time uh, from full stop. And again, this is like 10 months worth of work. Um, and, uh. Went well, you know, went, went pretty well. I mean, like the developing was awesome, it was, you know, it was, it was fun. Uh, but, you know, Kevin was not a great partner uh, for reasons that, you know, we won't necessarily get into. But um, I got pretty tired of Kevin not being a great partner over time uh, and, you know, said as much. Um, and the partnership, like, really fell apart over the course of about, you know, the next year or so. Uh, and I, if you're familiar with the Heffler for Jones uh, story, that's exactly what happened to me. Um, I didn't have a contract, it was a handshake agreement. Um, and, you know, one day I was like, I don't want to be part of this anymore. Like, here's what you owe me. And he was like, well, at, fir well, at first he was like, okay, all right. And like two weeks later he was like, yeah, no, I don't. Um, and so I walked away from all three of these restaurants with nothing. Um, we got some cool websites out of it. I mean, they were for a time what we would say, and we would, we, would we, stand, would we would stand by this. At the time, they were the greatest restaurant websites on the Internet. Um, Station Street PGH and uh, UnionPGH.com are they're still alive if you're interested. Um, but they're uh, they're pretty spectacular sites. But that's all we really came out of it with. I mean, you know, I I get to say I was like involved in restaurants, which was always kind of like a bucket list item for me. I got to you know start a few restaurants, but um, you know, in the end, it was like now I, I don't eat there anymore. You know, we don't really I don't talk to the chef anymore, and every and everybody in town kind of knows like things went sour between me and the chef. Um, you know, but he's still biggest name chef in town and you know we have a pretty good you know name of our of our own in Pittsburgh um, you know but if you know if you're in town and you know about us you know like ooh shit went down between Jay and Kevin um, sometimes retreat is the better part of that yeah, yeah there you go there I you go nobody blamed anyone yeah there was yeah it was it My was didn't get dragged through the mud and right Jason I mean we we you know we kept it publicly civil um, which which is pretty good um, but yeah I, that was it that's the story Sorry, everyone, for the, <laughs> for the bummer. Get, you know, get, your get a contract. Get That's your a lesson. Contract. Get a contract, everybody. And even if you have a contract, things can still go bad. Yeah. And you got to like, look at the relationships. And, yeah. You know. Are we done? Do we use all of our available time? I, I feel like there needs to be a hot dog shirt now. Like, oh. <laughs> like something to bring it back. Yeah. You know? I made I made T-shirts for the hot dog shop and for the barbecue place. I did everything, Dwayne. It was, you know, I was an owner. <laughs> Even the hot dog shirts. Yeah. <laughs>